Well, welcome to Tuesday's edition of Take 5. This week we started talking about Hebrews chapter number 11, and we're going to stay with that for a little bit. Um, and we're going to talk about it for a couple of weeks. I don't know how everything's going to work out through the holidays with the things that we've got going on with the, the kids' Christmas program this coming weekend, and then the ensemble will be singing the next weekend, and then Christmas Sunday uh, after that. So I, I don't know how it's all going to work out just yet, but just know this, that for the next little bit, we're going to be staying in Hebrews 11, and we're going to try to get the clearest picture that we can of biblical faith, of faith that pleases God, because at the end of the day, that's really all um, that matters. Now, there are all kind of different opinions. We talked about this yesterday. There are all kind of different opinions about what makes great and commendable faith in the church today, but the only faith that we need to concern ourselves with is the faith that pleases God and receives His commendation. That's, that's what matters. When you rightly divide the scriptures, you will actually find that all of the ideas that people have about what great faith is, that they're just not right. They sound good to our carnal mind, but they're just not an accurate description of biblical faith. To, to say that biblical faith only brings good into my life is, is to, to misinterpret the scriptures. As a matter of fact, in Hebrews 11, towards the end of the chapter, there's uh, the plainest and clearest picture that there could ever be of this faith that can be two-sided. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's just downright painful, but but the outcome is not what makes faith, right? It's, it's where we place it. It comes from within and it's where we place it and who we place it in. That's what makes faith up. So let me read this passage of scripture to you right here. Make sure that you pay very close attention to what's being said because the first part of this that we're going to read sounds really, really good. So he says this, what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith, now listen to what they did. Through faith they conquered kingdoms, they enforced justice, they obtained promises, they stopped the mouths of lions. All that sounds good so far, right? They quenched the power of fire, they escaped the edge of the sword, they were made strong in weakness, they became mighty in war. They put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead back by resurrection. Now, now you hear all of that. That sounds really good. I, I'm telling you, that, that sounds awesome. But, but watch what he says immediately next. But others suffered. Now, I know that's not the direction you wanted that to go. And me either. And I've taught you this before, but it, it's, it's kind of like we put this out of our mind and we don't want to remember this because this is difficult. After all of that good stuff, then he says, others suffered mocking and flogging and chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted and mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains, in dens and in caves of the earth, and all these received commendation for their faith. Every one of them received God's commendation for their faith. Those that were receiving the dead back to life and those that were stopping fire and those that were winning great battles and, and those that uh, just could not seem to be defeated and those that suffered and those that were mocked and those that were flogged and those that were cut in two. All of these people were commended for their faith. So you cannot say that faith is all good things happen in my life and all prayers are being answered and, and, and I'm always having, you know, good luck as it were. You cannot say that about faith. That is impossible to do that because all of that is just the outcome. It's, it's just the outcome. And we're not worried about the outcome. We're worried about the actual act of faith itself. You cannot judge faith by the outcome. Now, nobody I know really is interested in a faith that would lead to pain or struggling or torment or sorrow. I, I'm not, but, but it doesn't matter whether we're interested in it or not. Sometimes faith takes us that direction. 
Most people want a faith that gives them power and confidence and answers and strength with no fear. They want a God that'll step in and fix everything. They want a God that'll give them healing and security and success and prosperity. And the thing is, I believe that God will do all of those things. I I do. But I also know The journey of faith will sometimes take you through trials and sickness and poverty and depravity and temptations and and even death. Now you do run into those every day that sell this fake faith. (laughs) That's kind of hard to say. They sell a fake faith that teach people that That faith is all blessing and no pain. And if you have enough faith, you'll be healed and you'll be successful and you'll get the job and you'll never suffer and everything will be right in your world. But if that's true, you have to ask yourself, did the Apostle Paul have enough faith? Because the Bible said he was beaten and stoned and run out of almost every town that he went into. Did the disciples have strong faith? Because every disciple except John died a martyr's death. And then you have to ask yourself about Jesus himself. Did he have faith because he ended up on a cross and died a terrible, terrible death? That's this idea that people have about faith today, that it never takes you down bad roads and it never takes you through hard places. But that's because people are looking at the outcome of faith and they want the outcome to always be good. Well, let me tell you something. The outcome is not always good. Maybe I should say comfortable instead of good because even when it's uncomfortable, God has a way of making it good. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even when the thing seems bad, God has a way of making it good. But we're looking at the outcome and looking at the journey instead of looking at the one that we have put our faith in. So the Bible tells us that we should live by faith day after day after day of our life. This is not something that we just do once in a while, and that's probably why we don't understand it. We're supposed to live by faith each and every day of our life. Four times the scriptures tell us the just shall live by faith, not are saved by faith. That's already happened. If you're just then you're saved. But the just, the saved, they shall live by faith. And that's something we're supposed to do every day. No greater example could be given than the children of Israel needing to go out and look for manna every day. And then Jesus teaching about it when he taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer, saying, give us this day our daily bread. God is wanting people that will exercise faith each and every day. And when you do that, then it becomes practical, then it becomes something that gets perfected in your life as you live out faith each and every single day. Well, hey, it's been good being with you. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Wednesday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you and have a great day.